Welcome back everyone. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and you are looking at a video, uh, yet another video that concerns the Singer Bentwood case that I got. It is structurally in pretty good shape, although it is going to be getting a, a, some restore finish love. Um, the reason I'm showing this to you today is because there are times when you have to make do with what you have. Now, in another video, I showed you guys how the someone had taken the original hinges in this case and had sawed them off, probably a great deal of effort. And I think they did it because they were using the case to put a different machine than the singer that originally went in here. Why, I don't know. But, you know, they were doing the best they could and they used it because a lot of companies copied the dimensions of the 14 and a half inch width, seven inch depth. Uh, there were other Singer dimensions, but this was probably the most common. And a lot of manufacturers would copy them. So someone could have got easily gotten a different machine and said, hey, I need a base for it. But they were having issues with the uh, pins lining up or whatever. So uh, you guys saw in earlier videos, I removed the old hinges. Thankfully, like so many things from the past, they were designed to be removed, and I replaced them. I had spares, and I these are vintage spares. It came from a, a case that was destroyed long ago, but I kept those parts. Uh, lesson learned, you always want to keep parts that you never know when you're going to need them in the future. And if you don't need them, give them to someone who, who can use them, right? Waste not, want not. So that's all well and fine. Um, however... I noticed, and I don't know if you guys can see this at, at the angle that you're looking at this box. I'm going to zoom in. There's something missing here. If you look at the supports on the corners, right, you have the corner blocking, and then you have this sort of oval shaped piece, what I think is wood, I'm pretty sure it's wood, and then they added little tacks. Now they did this because the, the blocks themselves, um, they, they come up so far. And I believe this has to do with making sure that your sewing machine bed is flush, right? It's, you want it right at the level or close to the level of the edge of the case base. And then this looks to me like it was put in here. These are little, little leaf-shaped pieces, and they were simply installed with tack nails. Well, when you come over to this side, I'll zoom in even more, you will notice that, uh-oh, you know, and when I saw this machine, I didn't, I was having to make a decision fairly fast. And of course here, you see, you see the block and you see a, a corner fill piece. This is wood, which is also over on, you know, this side right here but we're missing the little support. So if I, I already know, if I put a machine in this base, what's gonna happen is the machine is going to be, uh, let's see, what's an expression? Cattywampus, wappy jawed. Those are all slang words for, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be off uh, on level, right? And we don't want that. So are there replacements for these little pieces? Quite possibly. I don't know that they exist. I might have to make them. You might have to make them. Or if you say, gosh, you know, I don't have a power saw. What am I going to do? But you need to get the machine level. Ah, well, sometimes you, you innovate, right? You come up with a MacGyvering type solution to these things. I happen to have some, some leather scraps that I've been using in the past to demonstrate. Uh, you can see all the holes. You know, I pulled the stitches out where I was using these to test the leather stitching ability of one of my machines. And first thing I thought, I had a remnant of a, of a men's belt, which is about this, uh, this thick, right? It's about the same thickness as these pieces, but that's really hard to cut. I don't have leather cutting. I don't really have leather knives. I don't do leather working. So these two pieces are, when you stack them, you get the same height as this piece here. So I decided to and I did this, I had to do it by eye. I didn't trace the, uh, the, the piece down here, but I cut out a piece of this leather. Now, what, I'm, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to, first of all, test it. Let's pull this closer so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Um, okay, let's zoom in. 
Now, what am I going to do? Well, first thing I want to make sure that I've cut it right. And this is kind of an eyeballing thing here, guys. It's, you know, I don't have a template for it. Uh, uh, there we go. And it fits, right? And it fits rather well. That's one piece. Now, if you look closely at it, well, you know, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty darn close. Not too bad for just, you know, trying to guesstimate and eyeball it. And you can trim it down. Always start bigger than what you think you need, and then you can trim it. You get the ba basic shape, and you can always trim it to fit. Now, I will use this as a template, and I will cut another piece just like it. And when I do this, and you could turn it upside down. You could put it on the suede side if you wanted. You can see where I, where I cut it out here. And I'm simply going to come over, and I can cut you know, another piece to, to, to match. You know, we'll get really close anyway. Now I could do this with an X-Acto blade. I could even take an ink pen and kind of mark it out. But I think I'll just hold this one and uh, see if I can cut out a new one or a second one, I should say, by just holding this still. I've got to be careful. I don't want to, the scissors are to cut the leather, not my hand. Now I can come over here. And again, any of you who, who are, masters at cutting fabric are probably laughing because, you know, you're like, oh. But I have a good pair of sharp scissors here, and I'm cutting. The reason I'm doing this, you say, why don't you just cut one thicker piece of leather? These pieces of leather you see here are soft. They're garment weight. They're flexible, and they're just easier to deal with. So by cutting two of these, they're easier to cut than one of the thicker leather, and I'll just stack them. You know, it's not it's not a, this is not really an aesthetic issue. Okay, now, how am I going to attach them? I don't know if I have tack nails this small. Tack nails, let's get this up close, you guys can see. A tack nail is a very small nail, uh, and they're designed to, to hold wood together, but they're also designed to come apart. It was not really, it's meant to be secure, but a tack nail can often be, used when you know that you might want to disassemble something someday. And my first real experience with them <clears throat> was with an old white rotary, actually it was a Kenmore rotary made by white, an old cabinet. Parts of the cabinet were glued, they were cornered, they were built to stay together. But a part of that cabinet was designed with tack nails. It was no accident. Uh, they did it so that you could take that part of the cabinet apart. Why? because the power cord ran inside the cabinet. It was all about making it look neat and tidy. But even then, they knew someday that cord might need replacing. Uh, and sure enough, I had to learn how to take that part of the cabinet apart. Um, if I, were, I wasn't making videos back then, or I would love to, to show how it was done. It was kind of a, well, like anything else, it's learn as you go. So, uh, but anyway, back to the issue at hand. Sometimes you, you want to make do. You want to get something that you can kind of get it to work. It's not original. They didn't, you know, this is, uh, to my knowledge, not original. I don't think I have the tack now. So what will I do? I'm going to find an adhesive or glue that I can use. And I will simply glue these two. I can glue them maybe one, or one at a time or two at a time. And what I've done is I've essentially shimmed this little pocket, right? This corner will now be shimmed. And if you look at the the thickness, right? Here's the, I'm going to have to zoom in or this probably isn't going to show up for you guys. Okay. So there's, there's the two layers of leather compared to the original either piece of wood or a piece of old hard leather, I can't really tell. And, and so, what a, you know, this is one of those things where if you were going to completely restore this and put it in a museum, it's not rare. If you had a museum piece that, that really need full restoration, you would, of course, you'd go and you'd cut the wood and you'd stain the wood and, you know, you would do what you needed to do here. But in our case, the leather will be a nice soft pad. It's dense enough not to squash down too much and it will accomplish <coughs> the thing that we are really after here, which is to get our machine level, okay? It's not really going to affect the look of your case. Your machine is almost always going to be in here. So it's not as if, you know, it's not an aesthetic thing for me. It's about function and taking care of the machine um, 
aesthetics is very subjective. You know, if you, you may decide, maybe you decide to do this, but you say, you know what, I want to, I want this to be dark brown. I don't want it to be this camel colored. Well, no problem. You could use, uh, if you have any old wood stain lying around or even a stain marker, you could use it on this if you wanted to. It will show up less. Eh, you know, it's really up to you. That's a very personal thing. But, but right now we're talking about function. Uh, aesthetics do matter. Okay, they matter to everyone, including me, but not this particular part. Um, this is a detail that a lot of people don't spot. You could easily buy a machine where one of these is missing or both or all. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's something you kind of notice later after the fact, I did. But it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, right? It's not a tragedy. You just simply, uh, you find something that is close to what was original and you kind of get it to work for you so that um, you can get on with getting your machine going and getting it sewing. So anyway, guys, I just saw this and I thought, oh, I should make a video because I've never, I've never had to do this before. I've had to come up with pads on an industrial machine, but those were foam and I had to order them because I couldn't replicate them. But for this, if you can replicate it, fabricate it relatively simply. If you don't have a piece of leather scrap, you could even consider using uh, a piece of wood if you had it. Uh, try to score the wood with something if you have a little little tiny uh, miter saw or maybe um, uh, it depends on how thick the wood is, how, how you would cut the wood. You can use wood, you can use just about anything. The key is to get the shape and get it in the right spot so that your machine will be happy when you install it. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll, uh, I think I have another video coming up on this this old case that uh, I'm going to show you guys. You've seen it before but I I really want you to see how the uh, restore finish cleans things up and kind of what I want to do, you know, what I what do I do before I start putting any liquids on here. Um, and anyway, we will see you in the next video.